we will show how to use CVXPy layers for tasks in machine learning. So specifically, we're going to look at structured prediction tasks. Uh, so in, in the basic setting of structured prediction, the examples and the labels are both vectors. And we're going to denote the sets that they belong to as script X and script Y, respectively. So throughout, we will assume that script Y is a convex set, but we'll make no assumptions on X. And the goal is, like in all of machine learning, is going to be to predict the outputs given the inputs. Uh, so specifically, we're going to, because we're going to be using CVX Pi layers, um, we're going to use a machine learning model that takes the form of a convex optimization model or a convex optimization problem. Uh, and so a convex optimization model is a function phi, which is represents an argmin optimization problem. So it's written out here. So uh, given an input x, uh, the prediction that a convex optimization model makes uh, for that input is the argmin over y of a, of a function e of x comma y. Uh, and that function e is the energy function, which is parameterized by theta. So we make some assumptions on the structure of this optimization problem. So the objective function e is assumed to be convex in its second argument. Uh, and theta here is the tunable parameter that we're going to learn. And I, I guess I should say that, th so this is a really general um, formulation. So even though this is a convex optimization problem, one thing to note is that the energy function can depend arbitrarily on both x, which is the, the input or the training example, and theta. Uh, so in that sense, it's very general. And in order to make a prediction for the training example x, um, we have to solve the convex optimization problem. So we have to find the argmin over y of the energy function. And so the, the reason that CVX pi layers comes into play here is that we want to tune the parameter theta in the problem in order to get good predictions. So we're gonna. This notebook specifically looks at um, an example uh, in in which the goal is to denoise some noise corrupted signals. So uh, the training data looks like a bunch of signals, which are vectors in Rn. They're corrupted by noise, and then the labels are the true the true uncorrupted underlying signals, which are also vectors in Rn. Uh, and here n will be like twenty. So we can jump right into the code. Uh, this first cell here is just a bunch of imports, standard imports. Uh, the only interesting ones for us, I guess, are these two. So uh, notice we have to import CVX Pi, uh, and we're going to import it as CP. And we have to import it because we're going to make a CVX Pi problem, which is going to represent the convex optimization model. And then we also import the CVX Pi layers package. So this specific example is going to use PyTorch. So we import uh, from CVX Pi layers.torch, we import CVX Pi layer. Uh, but we could have just did a, we could have just as well used TensorFlow. This next cell uh, just generates the noise corrupted signals and the true signals. Um, so the training data and the validation data. Um, there's a hundred training points, a hundred validation points, and the size of the vectors that we're dealing with is just is an R20. Um, the details aren't too important, but the the output signal, the true signal. Um, comes from a, a cosine evaluated at linearly spaced points, and then we, we corrupt each um, each component. But it's sort of more, I think, interesting to look at a picture. Um, so this is an example of a training data and label pair in the data set. The, uh, the blue solid line, this jaggedy line, that's the corrupted signal, and that's our input. And the goal is to predict the... Um, here, the, the true signal, which is the underlying signal, um, and it's this dashed orange line. So, right, the, um, the specific, so we're going to consider a very specific convex optimization model, so a convex optimization problem of a specific form. Um, and it's this right here. It's a simple one. Uh, it's a least squares problem, uh, a regularized least squares problem. And so given a noise corrupted uh, input x here, we're going to predict uh, the true uh, or, or predict the, the output signal y um, 
by solving this minimization problem over y. And so here, um, this problem is parameterized by x. It's the input, so it depends on the input x. And um, the variable is y. And d here is the first order different matrix, difference matrix. So it just computes the difference uh, between adjacent components of the output signal y. And the parameters theta that we're going to tune are the tuple of the matrix M, which is in Rn by M, and the scalar lambda, which is positive or non-negative. Um, and so we're going to tune these just like any other machine learning model. We're going to tune M and lambda using stochastic gradient descent. Um, and so I guess I should emphasize that um, unlike traditional machine learning where, you know, uh, you um, you solve a convex optimization problem to fit the parameters in like a logistic regression model. Here we solve a convex optimization problem at inference time to get the prediction. And then we differentiate analytically through the solution map using CVX pi layers. And uh, I guess an interesting thing, thing to know or just something to be aware of is that, you know, when uh, the matrix M here, when it's the identity matrix, this model is just Laplace and regularized. Uh, least squares denoising, which is a very standard method, and we're going to compare against that. So this cell here creates the CVX pi problem and the CVX pi layer uh, corresponding to this optimization problem. And you can see that the code pretty closely mirrors the, the math. So you declare a variable y, which is the optimization variable uh, that we'll optimize over. Um, we also have here, uh, in order to to make to make a problem ASA compliant, we do introduce an auxiliary variable x minus y, which uh, represents the difference between the input and the output. Um, and you'll see later here that x minus y is constrained to be equal to the difference between the numerical input x and the variable y. And so the next few lines um, create the parameters in the problem. So first you have um, x param, which represents the numerical input. We're not going to tune this parameter, it's just the data that the problem depends upon. But then we also have m and lambda, which are the tunable parameters. And the objective is to minimize, just like it's written in math, the, the sum squares of m times x minus y plus lambda times the sum squares of the difference between the components of uh, y. And here's that constraint that I mentioned earlier. And the problem is to minimize the objective function while satisfying the constraints. We create that right here. Uh, and then we, in, in just one line, we can create the CVX pi layer um, by giving it the problem, uh, giving it the parameters in the problem, which is x, m, and lambda, and then giving it the variable, um, the optimization variable that we want the solution for, which is y here. And now we have our PyTorch layer. So uh, one way to think about um, this construction is that the parameter, this is basically defining a function, which is the convex optimization model or the CVX pi layer. And the parameters uh, sort of correspond to the, the input signature of the function. And um, the variables here correspond to the, the, the return values of the function. So we'll see later that this layer that we've created is actually a callable Python object. object which um, given the parameters, or given values for the parameters, returns a solution. And of course, it's going to be differentiable with PyTorch. This next cell here is uh, just very standard generic PyTorch code uh, that actually doesn't really have anything to do with CVX pi layers specifically. It's just um, a stochastic gradient descent loop. Um, you give it a loss function, or you give it a callable, which is the loss function that, you know, given x and y, it evaluates the loss. Uh, you give it the parameters that you want to optimize over, and then you give it the training data and the validation data. So I won't go over this in much detail, but really it's just standard PyTorch stochastic gradient descent. Um, the interesting part, I guess, is um, here and how we call uh, this this training loop. So you'll see here that the loss function uh, involves um, uh, computing the predictions, obviously, and we compute the predictions by, uh, so given x, and then given the, um, 
parameters. Here um, we have theta and lambda. Now this shouldn't actually read m, but just just think that this is m torch. Uh, but given m and lambda, we pass in uh, the input m and lambda to the layer, and we get out the prediction. Um, I should note that actually, so here you know. The fact that x is capital here hints that we were actually working with a batch of inputs, which works completely fine with our code. Uh, and then it's just standard PyTorch code. You compute the mean square error, and then you return that. And so we'll compute that. And so just like that, we're fitting um, the uh, m and lambda uh, in the layer. And so we'll train here for 15 um, epochs and won't take too much time. You can see here that the validation loss is steadily decreasing over time. And okay, it appears to be done. And now we'll generate the uh, predictions on the validation set by passing in the validation uh, data to the layer and then the parameters once again. That's done. So that, by the way, involved solving 100 convex optimization problems, simple ones, but still solving them. Uh, and now to compare, um, we're going to compare this convex optimization model with um, Laplacian regularized least squares denoising. And we do that just by, you know, just for simplicity, we specify that same model in CVXPy. Um, but that's just um, that's this original model here with M replaced with the identity matrix. Um, and so there, there's no automatic tuning going to be involved here. This is just a baseline. And then we are going to, we'll sweep uh, lambda on the validation test, uh, the validation set to try and sort of make the least squares work as well as possible. So that happens here. Um, there we go, and now we're going to uh, evaluate our baseline on the validation set and compute the loss. And after it's, um, we found the optimal value of lambda for the validation set. And now here we plot the validation loss for both the convex optimization model and the least squares model. Um, so this dot dashed line here is the validation loss achieved by the least squares model. So using m equals the identity, and this. Black line here is the validation loss um, of the convex optimization model over time. Um, so as we as we train for each iteration, so you can see that it you know it it easily beats the sort of uh, straightforward least squares um, denoising model. And then finally, we'll look at an example of the kinds of predictions that the convex optimization model generates. So in this figure. Um, this light gray or silver da dot dashed line is the noise, corrupt noise corrupted input that we were given. The solid gray line is um, the prediction that least squares gave, uh, whereas the dashed black line is the true uh, output that we are attempting to recover. Uh, and then the black line, the solid black line, is the convex optimization model's uh, prediction. So you can see sort of across, um, oh, and, and so the x-axis, I should say, is each component of the vector or of the signal. Um, and the y-axis is the value of each component. So you can see that the solid black line is um, much closer and it tracks the true signal much better than the least squares model. and yeah, so that was just a simple example of how you can use CVX Pi layers for machine learning tasks. Uh, we have many more examples uh, that you can browse, both in our paper, which is available at uh, this link here, um, and this notebook itself, and along with many other notebooks, are available at our GitHub repository for CVX Pi layers. So it's github.com slash CVX group slash CVX Pi layers. And then you can jump into examples here and see a bunch of examples for both Torch and TensorFlow. And yeah, I hope that was useful. I would like to thank Akshay for this talk. By this point in the tutorial, you should know how to make a CVX 
PyPy problem to represent a convex optimization model using PyTorch. This concludes the tutorial on deep declarative networks and differentiable convex optimization. I would like to thank the speakers again and invite you to our Q&A session on Friday, August 28th at 8.30 a.m. and at 10 p.m.